North of Los Angeles, along the California coast, sits Naval Base Ventura County. This command is comprised of two bases, Port Wanimi and Point Magoo, two Navy installations that are seven miles apart. But tonight, they're getting ready for a fight, not on the battlefield, but in the ring. They play host to military boxers from the four services, duking it out in the Armed Forces Boxing Championship. everyone I'm Van Stokes here with Tom Lavacek we are ringside at the 2010 Armed Forces Boxing Championship at Naval Base Ventura County here in California tonight two services will battle it out in the 141 and 178 pound weight classes in consolation or bronze medal bouts let's take a look at the rules for amateur boxing we'll be using a computerized scoring system Three rounds of boxing consisting of three minutes of each round. Legal scoring blows. They're scored when the white part or the knuckle part of the glove forcefully strikes the head or body of their opponent. Fouls. The common fouls are slapping, holding, holding and hitting, or pushing. The fouls lead to cautions, cautions lead to warnings, and three warnings result in a disqualification. The referee. His number one responsibility is the safety of the boxer. He can stop the bout because the boxer is injured, bleeding, or one boxer has a superior lead over his opponent. Okay, now that we've seen the rules that will be in effect, let's recap a few of the preliminary bouts in the 141-pound weight class. First up, the bout between Marine Jamel Herring and soldier Dustin Lara. You get a quick look at Herring in the red, Laura in the black trunks and black jersey. And Herring, very much the aggressor right out of the chute, in control even when his headgear becomes dislodged. There was a short left hook there. It turned his headgear. He can't see. And so what's, what he, he smartly went down to one knee because he wants to be able to see with both eyes. Marine Corps boxing coach Jesse Ravello makes that equipment adjustment and we are ready to go again. Well smart is the name of the game because Jamel Herring kept it smart all the way right down to the end of this bout as he won defeating Dustin Lara 14 to 4. Herring moved on to the championship bout while Lara is now set for the bronze medal match. It was a skillful bout. Herring was definitely on his game but in this bout Lara was not. Next bout. Airman Matthew McCoy faced off against Sailor Justin Diaz. You see the attack right away. Justin Diaz in the blue. Matthew McCoy in the red. Diaz pretty much on the attack. And much like Jamel Herring in the earlier bout, it was Diaz methodical all the way as McCoy faced an eight count. And here came that eight count. Again, it was a short left hook. Staggers him just a little bit and referee steps in but Tom that set the tone throughout the course of this bout It was Justin Diaz who rode that strong right hand all the way towards the championship bout while Matthew McCoy Now will go for the bronze medal Diaz has been boxing for nine years and that experience paid off in this bout big time Tom when we come back No chance for the gold or silver but the two boxers you just saw defeated in the preliminaries will face off in a bronze medal bout. That's up next on TPC Sports. Welcome back to the Armed Forces Boxing Championship at Naval Base Ventura County here in California. In order to give these amateur boxers more experience, some of those defeated in the preliminaries are vying for a bronze medal in the consolation round. Up first is Army Specialist Dustin Lara, combat medic from Long Beach, California. More now on how boxing has helped him become a better soldier. <laughs> and I box because I love the sport. I think being a soldier first is what brought me to be a, a good boxer. 
because uh, being a soldier gives you discipline and, te and team cohesion and uh, just gives you uh, more discipline all around. And in, in boxing, you need to discipline for, the, for your weight, your training regiments. You need to get along with people around you. It, uh, you don't need to, but it would help, and it does. And I feel that, it, that it's given me all that, and it's helped me out in, in a lot of aspects of my, a lot of my life. I feel, I feel that I can adjust to any, the person that's, that's in the, while I'm in the ring very easily. If, he, if my opponent is tomorrow is someone who wants to stand in front of me a little more, he's not going to have a good time. Laura faces off against supply airman Matthew McCoy of St. Joseph, Missouri. Here, McCoy talks about how boxing has helped him stay out of trouble. Before I started boxing, I was kind of like a little wild child. Just kind of go out, I do all sorts of crazy things, and you know, I was going out there just being a fool. And um, ever since boxing, you know, I slowed down a lot. Actually, I wanted to face the, the toughest guy the first night, and I felt like I felt like Diaz was the toughest guy. You know, after the first round, I was up, I think, four three. Um, I was kind of moving, sticking and moving more, and then uh, so I got like a nice little one point lead. And then the second round, I don't even know what happened, but he ran off a combination, and uh, the coach said next thing they knew, I was down three or four. So then the third came out and. Um, I came back and I hit him with the right hand, a good right hand too. Uh, I just couldn't follow it up. Um, he, he wrapped up before I could even follow it up. By that point, I was down, I think, probably seven or eight points. And uh, it's just it's too hard to, to uh, come back from that, that deficit. I know Lars is a southpaw, the Army guy that I'm going to be fighting. You know, a southpaw, the distance is different than an orthodox fighter. I'm not worried about him. You know, I'm going in there confident and I know I'm going to take care of business. The bronze bout in the 141 pound weight class is here. Let's turn it over to ring announcer Castle Chalice for the introductions. Now making his way to the red corner. He represents the United States Army and he's a combat medic from Long Beach, California. He's now stationed at Fort Carson, Colorado and he weighed in at a game 145 pounds. Let's hear it for specialist Dustin Lara. Dustin Lara makes his way to the mounted platform, the squared circle as they like to call it. Let's get set to meet his opponent, Matthew McCoy now. And now, making his way towards the blue corner, represents the United States Air Force. He's a material management apprentice from St. Joseph, Missouri. Now stationed at Lackland Air Force Base in San Antonio, Texas. He weighed in at 139 pounds. Let's hear it for senior airman Matt The Real McCoy. Well, McCoy takes the platform now. The referee for tonight's action from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, Mr. Angel Villarreal. And we're underway. Bronze medal match. 141 pounds. It's the light welterweight division. Lara representing the Army. Gold trunks, gold jersey. And McCoy, red and blue trunks. He's got the blue jersey on, representing the Air Force, Tom. And as we saw earlier, in the preliminary bouts, each of them lost to their opponents. Laura lost to Herring, while McCoy lost to Diaz. They're fighting boxing right now for the gold, uh, for the bronze medal, I should say. Both of them came out cautious again. A lot of respect for each other. They, I'm sure, they both watched each other one, uh, each other boxer box in the preliminary bouts. But look at Laura. He's on the attack. He was unable to mount that attack earlier against his previous opponent, but right now he comes out. I want to say smoking against McCoy move ahead to under one minute in this bronze medal match it balances out the score with that straight jab by the Air Force boxer he now ties it up two to two 
Laura finds a way to slip ahead as this bout moves to under 30 seconds and quickly we move to round number two. Again. Even score. Even score. Both are stand up boxers. Let's see what happens here. McCoy very much on the attack, but right now it's Lara who tried to push him into the corner. Being cautioned right there for keeping his head up, presenting himself. Right. Again, Lara on the attack. And once again, uh, in amateur boxing, uh, only three words are spoken stop, break, and box. Everything else around the world is with hand signals in Olympic style boxing. Some language difficulties is right now McCoy has landed enough scoring blows, takes a two point lead right now. As we near the two minute mark in round number two, slipping ahead quickly, we see McCoy mounting the lead to seven to three. Laura a little bit trying to mount an attack, but there's a nice jab. You saw the head rock back. McCoy picks up another point. Both of them scored points on that exchange. Round number three, a four point advantage to start the round. Air Force is mounting the lead, five to nine. McCoy, a couple of quick combination punches. They move out to the center of the ring. McCoy, quick with that right hand. He puts the one two together. Takes a nine point margin right now. And Laura trying quickly, realizing where he is perhaps in this bout, Tom. Trying to put an attack together as he's on the backside by 10. With one minute and 30 seconds remaining, we're halfway through this third round. Quick right, quick left. 10 point difference now. All McCoy has to do is just keep throwing that jab, stay away, keep moving. But McCoy covers well and he moves well. Keep and circling. as a result, Lara's unable to put any scoring blows on that body. Well, he's doing exactly what he needs to be doing. He needs to step in just like that, keep throwing that jab and keep moving. Stick and move, stick and move, stick and move. Clock shows under 30 in this bout. Bronze medal bout. Light welterweight division, 141 pounds. As the seconds begin to tick away, each boxer having an opportunity to go after the bronze. And Matthew McCoy, by virtue of the scoring indicator, made good of his opportunity, Tom. And a lot of times, you're not going to see boxers being able to compete for bronze medals. A lot of times, they will stop it plain and simply at the semifinals and not conduct bronze medal matches. And exact, uh, you're exactly right. What they're trying to do here is get more experience for both of these boxers. So here in this case, they got nine minutes more of experience. And what the... Armed Forces Sports Committee, the Boxing Committee is looking forward to is competing in the national championships, competing in international competition. That's like the SISM Boxing Championships and even 2012 for the World Olympics. Well, let's go to Castle Chalice for the announcement of the official results. And we have a winner here tonight. Boxing out of the blue corner, Matt the Real McCoy. Castle Chalice has the interview with Matt McCoy. Matt, great job out there this uh, evening. I mean, he was quite a little pesky fellow. He kept on coming. What were you thinking there? How were you, what were you trying to do to keep him off you? Yeah, we knew uh, once he got down, I just needed to keep the lead, so I was just trying to stick and move. And uh, luckily, we came out with the win. Up next, another consolation bout, this time between Navy and a civilian in the 178-pound weight class. Stick around for more boxing action here on TPC Sports. Welcome back. We have one more bronze or consolation bout. But first, a look at how these 178 pound boxers got here. In the preliminary bout, sailor Brandon Wicker battled against soldier Jeffrey Spencer. You get a quick look at Spencer, black trunks, gold top, Wicker, red trunks, red top. And Jeffrey Spencer got off to a quick start. It was a fairly even balanced competition, but 
Wicker stayed pretty much on his back of his heels a lot of the time, Tom. Well, Navy boxer Brandon Wicker showed a lot of courage boxing in front of his Navy fans at the Warfield Gymnasium, and we'll see more of him in future military boxing and in national competition. Well, it was Jeffrey Spencer who moved on to the gold medal match with an 8-3 to three victory over Brandon Wicker. That allows Brandon Wicker to get back one more time in hunt of a bronze medal. Wicker is stationed at Camp Lejeune, North Carolina. He's been boxing since the age of 12. And here he talks about how he uses his height, or lack thereof, I should say, in the ring. My intent was to go in there and win that first round and establish myself because, you know, you're not going to have an easy day, you know. And, and that's what I did, you know. I let him know right off the rip that it's not going to be an easy day. Third round came about. The way I duck, I guess I ducked too low. I'm already a short guy, but I ducked too low. I already had gotten two warnings, and the ref, you know, took when you take points from me, they give the next guy two points. So that kind of was a big momentum shifter right there. That was that was momentum, like big momentum. So he realized, you know, all right, I got the two point lead. Now I can just pick my shots and move and dance. I'm having trouble with these fighters because they're long. They're they're long fighters. And I'm a short guy. I have to, you know, move a lot. And then they're just real, you know, pop shotish. You know, they, they get their points and they're gone. It was, it was a hard fight, you know. I'm not, I'm not mad at all about it. My goal is to, to beat one of these guys before I leave California. I have to. The bronze bout in the 178-pound weight class is about to begin. Wicker faces off against civilian. Dorian Anthony. Let's turn it over to Castle for the ring introductions. Making his way to the red corner, representing sports science world class boxing. He's currently training for the 2012 Olympic Games from Long Beach, California, weighing in at 174 pounds. He is the 2008 USA Men's National Champion and 2009 National Golden Glove Champion. Let's hear it for Dorian The Truth Anthony. Dorian Anthony gets quite a build up and rightfully so. He's the 2009 National Golden Gloves Champion. His opponent standing by. Castle has the call and the introduction. As and Dorian Anthony takes the ring. To the blue corner. Representing your own, the United States Navy. He is a hospital corpsman from Taunton, Massachusetts. He's now stationed in Camp Lejeune, North Carolina, weighing in at 178 pounds. Let's hear it for hospital man Brandon the Bulldog. So Brandon Wicker gets the big intro. And your referee for tonight's bout from Cincinnati, Ohio, Mr. Tom Cleary. Tom Cleary is introduced as the referee. We're set to get underway here. And once again, this is a 178-pound light heavyweight matchup. And again, we call it a bronze medal match, but civilian Dorian Anthony, who you see in front of you in the red, Will not actually earn a medal, but what happens in a bout like this, Tom, is Brandon Wicker would not have a bout if it wasn't for Dorian Anthony. So you talk about needed experience. This is an opportunity to gain experience and again get back in that ring, at least on the part of Brandon Wicker. Right now, what I see, uh, Dorian Anthony, what, what a tall boxer, and so Brandon Wicker again, he's at a he's at a height disadvantage and an arm arm length disadvantage. He might be Tom, but right now he's got a four to two lead here in the first round of this match, and he's neutralized that reach, if you will, of Anthony. Well, we know the crowd at the Warfield Gymnasium likes this so far. Take a look at Wicker, Tom, and you see that he keeps those gloves in close. He protects his head, protects his chest. Anthony has a tough time moving in and scoring. But the head rocks back there, and he picks up a point quickly there. 
Nice counter though by Brandon Wicker. Under a minute, first round. Again, both these boxers are showing a lot of power with those punches. Moving ahead to round two. Pick it up score-wise where we left off in the first stanza. But now Dorian Anthony a little bit more on the attack. But dodging those punches very artfully is Brandon Wicker in the blue. Brandon Wicker is doing an excellent job of moving in and moving out as he takes that 5-9 lead. That he does. But there's a nice right hand followed by a barrage of punches. Let's see if or how they score. And you've got Dorian Anthony much more on the attack right now, even though he's trailing by yep. four. He's, he's worked him into the corner. He's worked him against the ropes. But nice counter that time by Brandon Wicker as we go under one minute in round number two. Now, with less than ten to go, you see a five-point advantage right now by Brandon Wicker, and Wicker a little more on the attack towards the end of the second round. One of the things about Brandon Wicker is he's a, he's a he's he's in the military, so he can't work full time as he can't work full time in the sport of boxing like his civilian counterpart that's in the ring camp. Well, right now that doesn't weigh too heavy on the mind of Brandon Wicker as he's got a six point lead over Dorian Anthony. But your point is well made, Tom. Our military boxers have duties and responsibilities away from the boxing ring that sometimes. They really have to work hard in order to find time to train. So my hat is certainly off to each and every military boxer that climbs into this ring. They are a soldier, airman, marine, and, and they or have, sailor first. They have to balance both work and this military uh, military boxing. I always told the boxers who came to my office, remember, you're military first, you're boxer second. Under 35 seconds or towards the 35 seconds to go and take a look at Brandon Wicker. He is on the attack. He is fighting for a very appreciative Navy crowd in this venue, Tom, and they love every second of it. L listen to that crowd. They're on their feet cheering him on. As we tick down the seconds. Brandon Wicker just has to stay away now for these next 10 seconds, and he has won. Well, Brandon Wicker just does exactly what you said, Tom. He stays away. He keeps hold of that lead. He wins that bout and wins the bronze medal over Dorian Anthony. Let's go for the official announcement. Castle Chalice has it. Out of the blue corner, representing the United States Navy, Brandon the Bulldog Wicker! We got the champion here tonight, Brandon Wicker, and his game opponent, Dorian Anthony. Champ, first of all, congratulations on an excellent victory here tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Navy. And Tom, this was Brandon Wicker boxing in front of a partisan Navy crowd and he seemed to feed off of the crowd en route to his bronze medal victory. What I liked about this was this was an upset and this was a great win for him because he was going against a boxer who was the 2008 national champion and 2009 Golden Gloves champion. So the Navy can can hold their head proudly. So you talk about experience. He got a needed win and a good win right here against a very formidable opponent. I think we're going to see more of him in future boxing both at the national level and at the international level we'll certainly keep our eyes out that's for sure well now's your chance to weigh in you tell us which sports you want to see covered on the pentagon channel just email us at sports at pentagon channel dot mil i'm tom lavacek and i'm van stokes see you next time on tpc sports coverage of the 2010 armed forces boxing championship so long everyone